Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by Gabriel Merced. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so my apologies. In any case, the weapons requested were Tonfas and Sword. Dual Sword as well was an option, so I decided to go with that. And both of these weapons just needed to be corrupted. Spirits this time, I could not use Brute. And I'll get to the Soul Course soon enough. In the interest of full disclosure, here are the weapons that I'm using. My usual, nothing too special, well, relatively speaking. Uh, these aren't like super duper crazy dual swords, they're just corrupted with life drain. Uh, my demon horde tomfas on the other hand are pretty cool simply because, hey guess what, anima bonus on grapple. This is really nice, but I'll tell you what, you don't actually need this. So the entry fee so to speak to using this setup is very low and you'll see why. So let's get on to the guardian spirits and let's talk about what I exactly I'm working with. So First soul core I need to use was Nightmare Bringer, but before I get to the soul cores, let me explain why I think this Guardian Spirit, Rokugezo, is so great. So, there's a few things. One, it has lightning resistance, which is nice, but really, the cool stuff is here. So let's talk about this. Now, if you're running an A agility, A toughness setup, or even double A agility, uh, and a toughness or heck even double a agility and double a toughness setup roku gets those your friend because you get 20 extra toughness which is great but if you don't care about that all right but here's what's really nice anima bonus on timely guard this is one of the only sources aside from aberrant soldier that has this so if you want to put aberrant soldier and basically turn your timely guards into like getting nearly six anima then by all means do so but three is more than sufficient and this is one of those reasons why i don't need to have those demon horde tonfas to have that extra anima bonus again if you just generally want more anima you can use things like the arch yokai talisman and never have to worry about it but here's something else really cool with this yokai ability damage force boost all this means is that if you're at full anima and you use a yokai ability you will get 25 percent extra damage and the reason I picked this is because, and now we're going to get onto Nightmare Bringer, because first things with Nightmare Bringer, it costs 10 anima, dude. So more often than not, you're going to be pretty close to full, if not full. So might as well take advantage of this fact. Nightmare Bringer is one of the greatest cores in terms of special effects for corrupted weapons because you get extra melee damage with it. And on top of that, anima charge for your weapon when it awakens. And what's interesting about this when it comes to overall special effects is that it doesn't seem to conflict with anima bonuses. As you can see here, I have an anima charge and an anima bonus, which is great. Uh, the soul core itself, I think kind of gets swept under the rug, but it has a potential of a fly, a pl oh my, inflicting tri elemental confusion. I was trying to say apply and inflict at the same time, my bad. But in any case, you can hit a lot of targets, inflict confusion with three separate elements, and then if you're using corrupted weapons, you have the potential for quad elemental confusion, which is superb. Next up, I was tasked with using Magatsu Warrior once again. And I would advise ranking this one up to 30 simply because on, f oops, on Phantom and Brute Spirits, this, damage bon this charge bonus is awesome doesn't work so well on feral simply because feral already has a lesser version of this and they just don't stack as high as you might think so on phantom and on brute this is great when it came to other stats these two are just kind of there because i've had this for a while most importantly i was just interested in yokai ability keep pulse so you can get whatever luxury special effects you want but just ranking it up to 30 alone is huge and yet we have another great way to generate anima anima bonus timely guard we've got nightmare bringer and we already have this so you're in really good shape last but not least is wheel monk so i was tasked with getting gap closers and utility based soul cores and wheel monk does just that so wheel monk runs targets over can move around and inflicts fire yeah if you need a good gap closer that fulfills a lot of different things wheel monk is for you so I'll showcase more about the soul cores. I know I didn't really talk about them too much, but I'll do so uh, in a moment. But yeah, Will Monk is definitely a lot of fun. And so that's why I brought it back. Let's get on to the secondary guardian spirit. We've got this one, Yaonami Hime, Mumio's guardian spirit, woohoo. This one is predominantly a water-based guardian spirit and it has a lot of great synergistic effects. 
Anytime you perform water-based damage, get some life back. If you're at low health, you can get some health back, resist water, and then here's what I really tried to play towards. Anima bonus saturated enemy. And now you may see, hey, I use a key. Anima bonus enemy saturated. What's the difference? This means when they have the saturation debuff on them, and this is the first time they get inflicted with that saturation debuff. So what you can do with Suiki, and as you can see right here, it kind of shares similar properties to Wheel Monk, in which that you can move around, close gaps. It's it's not as overt of a gap closer in my opinion compared to um, Wheel Monk. I find that Suiki is a bit more evasive, but nonetheless, you've got quite a lot of power with both of them. And so here's what's really cool. So against say multiple, excuse me, against say multiple enemies you can hit them and get them saturated so you get extra anima and then when you decide to come out of it you wail upon them and guess what you get even more anima that's awesome which is why i recommend you boost this to rank 30 so you can take advantage of really just messing with them with water which is great other than that when it comes to stats i just cared for yokai ability keep all so everything else is extra Anima charge and yokai shift does help, but it's pretty crazy when you get into yokai shift and you've saturated an enemy, you have so much anima, it's just comical. So you'll you'll see how you can work with that soon enough. But in in short, you can almost entirely be in feral just using Suiki because of all this anima charge that you have. Which is again why I say you don't really need as much as you might think. Next up, when it comes to gap closers, Hellish Hag, oh my, this is one I see that just does not get used too often, and it's it's one of those cores that feels a little weird to use at first, because as you can see, the animation is kind of like, alright, you just like jump in at first, and then you do a little jump, and then there's a, it looks like a bit of a delay, but I'll show you that it's really good against enemies who decide to dodge backwards a lot, basically they dodge back, but guess what, you ram right into them with your teeth. When it comes to Soul Core rank, go ahead and boost it. These are cool stats. I didn't care too much for it. I happen to find one with Anima Bonus Confused Enemy, which just takes this up like a million levels because I'm confusing enemies courtesy of me using Water and Corruption, and the Corrupted Weapons already have a good amount of Anima Charge, so it just it feels extra dirty, and I really was not starved for Anima at any point. In any case, let's get on to the last one. Tengu. I don't think I've used this one yet. And Tengu is pretty much just, hey, I just don't want to deal with attacks. I'm just going to hover in the air and then smash down upon you. Against human opponents, it can knock them down. And against many yokai attacks, they'll pretty much just keep trying to attack you, but they can't. So it can be really cool. In any case, enough about this. Let's showcase response time for these weapons. Let me get my controller out so you can see what's going on. As a reminder, this is how I judge response time. And what is response time? Basically, the soonest I can do something after I use a soul core. So I'm going to be holding down block the entire time. So let's first start off with Nightmare Bringer. I can respond very quickly. So the tornadoes can pretty much just go out and I'm in good shape. Also, one thing to note about Nightmare Bringer is you can't use Soul Cores for some time, but towards the end of its animation, you can. So yeah, I would advise using Nightmare Bringer as a way to help you set up some combos, help you inflict quad elemental confusion. Next up, we have Mangatsu Warrior. There's two versions to activate. Here's the default six anima version, quick response time. And then if you activate it twice and have nine anima to do so, you can do that and the response time is still pretty quick. Next up, we've got Wheel Monk. You can control the duration of it. Now, overall, really quick response time. Super good for that. Um, here you can see the turning radius. This is as sharp as you can turn, just so you know. And then you can basically just, you just keep moving around and you can see I'm just holding the stick or I'm not holding the stick and just holding down the yokai ability. But yeah, it's pretty powerful. Definitely a lot of fun. Next up, we've got Suiki. Functions very similarly in terms of like the buttons you press compared to Wheel Monk. It can feel pretty fun, but let's see the response time. Very quick. Very, very, very quick. So it's quite flexible. Alish Hag. Reasonably, it's a pretty long animation, but and the response time isn't the fastest, but it's still workable. Hengu is a very long animation, very quick response time. One thing I need to make you aware of when it comes to Tengu is that you can get hit as you're flying up. As you can see, I was able to pause it and your feet can get clipped, but as soon as you're in the air, you're pretty much safe. So at the height of your jump, you're like 
will pretty much totally save. You can avoid so many attacks. It's pretty remarkable. So my advice would be to use it pretty early. Let's showcase some things involving Yokai Shift just to give you ideas for some combos that you can use while working with it. Come on. Alright, pop Yokai Shift, right? Then what I like to do is back away, Guardian Spirit, and just wait for Saturated to take effect. Charge up, you can do Hellish Hag right after a charge. Hellish Hag actually does a reasonable amount of key damage and break damage, you'd be surprised. And anytime I need a quick evasion, and I can't do the dodge, I can always just reposition with Sui Ki. Here you go. It can be pretty nice. So yeah, pretty cool. But what about Phantom? Let's bust out Phantom. Alright, close range, close enough. Make sure he gets hit with all the elements. And then I can usually charge in for Magatsu. So I'll showcase that again. Yeah, it works pretty handily. And then of course to finish things up, I can just ram him in with Wheel Monk. Do a bunch of normal attacks as well. So yeah, showcase it one more time. Pretty neat, huh? And then let me show the normal attack business. Yeah, it's pretty beastly. All right, let's kill it and then... Okay, it's dead. Sweet. So yeah, just some ideas. It's definitely a big power play. So, how can I use these soul cores on their own? Let's showcase it. So, Nightmare Bringer is basically something you want to use to just have like an enemy just have to deal with the elemental pressure as you're kicking their butt with the weapons and pushing them into, say, the Tornado Zix extra awesome. Like, it, it can be really devastating if you use it right. So, that's how I would use Nightmare Bringer. When it comes to Mogatsu Warrior, say, against humans, I would say use it as a zero key combo extension. It's pretty dirty that way. If you can trap an enemy, there's almost nothing they can do to that. It's pretty crazy. When it comes to say Wheel Monk, um, you want to make sure you don't like whiff it and then have the whole turning radius word at work against you. So yeah, as you can see, good for a gap closer, good for back dodging enemies. Let's see if I can show case something else. Probably gonna die though. Yeah. But getting those initial hits off with Wheel Monk is really important. So make sure you can do that pretty handily. When you can, it's pretty awesome. Also, being able to inflict these, the Scorch on an opponent is so awesome, especially using corrupted weapons. So, what about a good old Feral stuff? Alright. Let me see if I can showcase a good moment for Sui Ki. Help you inflict confusion, of course. And, of course, another thing you can do with Sui Ki pretty handily is just kind of like, be like, no, I want to move around. I find you have a lot more control with it compared to uh, Wheel Monk. And then let's show Hellish Hag. Yeah, dodge back, or not. Oh, that would have been the perfect opportunity. Come on. I guess I'll try to show you a little combo with it. And then what about Tengu? I don't feel like dealing with you, dude. <laughs> there you go. Now you know how to use Tengu. So I use it earlier than I could respond. Uh, the er, er, sorry, I meant to say earlier than I might expect. They just avoided it. It's great when it hits, but even just as another evade can be super handy. 
Very nice, Hellish Hag. Thank you. And then let's move around him. Let's, like, saturate at the same time. Dodge away, dude. Or not. Not bad, huh? Awesome. Let me showcase the other thing pertaining to Tengu. Tengu can knock targets down. Human specifically. Which can make it extra awesome. But again, my advice for Hellish Hag is use it either when you're far away. Or a target's gonna dodge away. Which can sometimes be the same thing. Now, let's talk about some things pertaining to these weapons. So, these weapons share quite a lot. So, they both have on-key pulse-based abilities. So you've got Demon Dance, you've got Demon Dash. Of course, you can follow up the Demon Dash with Demon Fang. Or, you know, good old Pulverize, which is great. Dual Swords just has Winter Winds, but this means you can maintain a lot of key. And if you're using Corrupted Weapons, this is remarkable. One thing I like to do is use the on-key pulse abilities to transition into flash attacks, but sometimes that's really not necessary. With Tanfa, you can flux two into a weapon swap. In this case, a sheet swap, which is extra awesome. So you can be quite fluid with your gameplay in this regard. Bear in mind that the Tanfa flash attack is one of the fastest in the game. If not, I think it's one of the most, I think it's like instant activation, basically. Come on. Pretty cool, huh? But yeah, you've got a lot of constant pressure, and these weapons already do a pretty good amount of key damage. Got God of Wind. Elemental application by a double-headed slice. Of course, let's not forget Tampa Gun. And you've got Kanagi to assist you. Eh, not that time. And then one other thing that these two weapons share... Let me just kill this guy to demonstrate. Or just show it. Is that they both have evasive abilities in case you mess up. So... In low stance, Tanfa has prescience. So evade all incoming attacks during the recovery period following a dodge, which is great. And guess what? Dual Swords has the same thing too. Mind's Eye too. Except compared to Tanfa, you get 80% extra attack power <laughs> when you pull off Mind's Eye too. So if you dodge a little too early, you'll still be fine. And that's on top of Kanagi, which is really good. On top of the utility-based cores we have. So it can feel extra remarkable. Now let's showcase the whole package. I'm basically not gonna let anything slide and give you some ideas of things you can do. Block me, thank you. Zero key combo. Very nice. Ooh, dirty. Well, I guess I didn't need to Tengu there. Let's see what else I can do. Get that confusion. That's a lot of power. You're dead, right? Yeah. <laughs> Murdered. And I can tell you, you'll have a lot of anima to be able to pull off stuff like this. Oops, I was trying to get the Shrike. There we go. Use Tengu on that, it's so silly. Murdered. Alright, what else I got? What have I not used? I'm not even sure I've used everything, haven't I? I mean, aside from Yokai Shift. I guess I'll use now. Dude, I'm almost dead. It's what the heck is he supposed to do? I don't think they can really do much. The only say, uh, sorry, the only thing I will say is that 
Because Tanfa can be quite input heavy, you might end up like messing up your inputs just because of like Demon Dance, all the Flux do canceling, all that stuff. So just be wary of that. It takes some practice, but once you can do it, it's really not that big of a deal. No, I feel like leaving. Yep, yeah, there you have it. Uh, I'll kill one more enemy. Pick on this poor soul. Yeah, that's right. Hey, quad elemental confusion. Oh, isn't that cute? Yeah, that's the thing that's possible. It's extra dirty. Yeah, have fun with the setup. It's it's pretty powerful. And I think their biggest difficulty is gonna be less about soul cores and even really anima management and more about making sure your tomfas and swapping your weapons and whatnot and making sure your hitbox and stuff uh, with the weapons it works to your advantage. That's pretty much it. I would say the weapon stuff is a bit more on the difficult side, but you'd be all right. In any case, I think I've talked enough. Let's showcase this setup in action. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, you guys know the drill. Let's see this in action. So the purple enemy in this scroll is going to be Tokchiro from the dream region. So yeah, uh, trust no one, not even yourself. So here we go. The skeleton warriors really aren't too bad. In all honesty, it's just frustrating when you have, yep, idiots like that who like to shoot you from afar. So my objective is simply going to be knock them down, deplete their key. And as you can see, I do that. And then a nicely placed sign of the cross knocks both of them down at once. Moves like God of Wind really help deplete key and her great all-purpose moves. And then whoosh, got that burst counter. And I'm just quickly trying to deplete this guy's life using my plasma swords, basically. That mortal flow wasn't the best because I got hit, but I regained my life using Magatsu Warrior. And yeah, not having too much trouble. I want to make sure to showcase Tanfa's. Kanagi is my friend here. Just avoiding a lot of attacks, which is great. So I don't have to worry too much about over committing and don't even have to use anima to do so. Use the Tengu well in advance of that, just so I didn't have to have any risks, and that's what it's really good for. All right, Mogatsu Warrior, Kanagi show off time. Ooh, nice. Very, very nice. Hellish Hag does a small amount of key damage, but again, not the best usage of it. Nonetheless, target is corrupted. And then let's confuse it with Sui Ki into Yokai Shift. Oh boy, here we go. A lot of damage has been inflicted. All right, I dodge back, activate that, use the Tengu. And then yeah, target is dead. Two targets are dead. I throw away Yokai Shir for the time being. I don't throw it away, I just put it away because I just didn't want to uh, deplete the entirety of the gauge to zero. But yeah, for the most part, I'm not having too much trouble. And then there we go. Double-headed slice. This is the last enemy before I fight myself who has been corrupted. So yeah, we're gonna kill the corrupted version of myself who's purple, which can make him quite a bit of a threat. So Tomfas are actually really, really good against him because Tokshiro, both forms of him, human and yokai, have a tendency to basically try to parry you. And Tanfa's skills, specifically Pulverize, are pretty ridiculous. Wheel Monk getting me the confusion helps even further, but I realize I'm not going to be able to get confusion, sorry, get his uh, key fully down. So I changed tactics, but I've got Corrupted on him again. And yeah, here we go taking advantage of any downtime he has, and with his, some of his scary animations, he does have quite a lot. But for the most part, I have to play quite evasively because he can go from 0 to 100 in like 2 seconds. Here's a good example of Hellish Hag. Use it as a great gap closer, because it can be very tricky to hit Tokshiro. Alright, here's that attack. Alright, he's got a lot of downtime, so I threw out Nightmare Bringer. Ooh, sweet. Very nice. I get that Phantom Shifting Grapple. Um, his wake up attack, you just stay behind him, or in my case, activate Nightmare Bringer. And yeah, I'm just using that to assist me with my pressure play. Here you can see Tokcho is trying to parry, but Pulverize is basically neglecting any risk whatsoever. So even flash attacks are actually liable to get blocked uh, by his attack. There are many skills which also kind of get screwed over by that move, but not Pulverize, which is great. Now, Lightning Form of Tokchiro basically just gets staggered at like anything. It's basically a human opponent. There are a few moves in which, for the most part, he will, I guess, play more like a yokai, like that one. 
but for the most part, it's not big of a deal. I was a little annoyed here. You can see I nearly depleted his key, but he refreshed, which sucked. But anyway, Tomfa is going to basically carry me pretty darn hard here, and I am having that difficulty I talked about in the dojo, where I like my fingers can't move fast enough, or I just like mess up a little bit, which can be a little frustrating. And again, I think that's going to be the greatest difficulty you're going to have here. Not even key management, not even anima management, but just making sure your abilities can work well. All right, thank you, Tengu, for a little bit of damage. Maybe not the best placement, but it's still okay. Nice, very nice. Use the key, get saturated off, so I'll have an even easier time generating anima, which is great. You can see that anima slowly going up even further. And yeah, this is not going to be too much trouble. Tengu, look, just straight up avoided all those attacks. Get that burst counter off, hellish hag to catch up with him. Even if it wasn't the best, it was quite handy. And so, Nightmare Bringer, toss that out. I mean, I've got a lot of anima to spare, which is really, really good. All right, ooh, is he almost down? Almost down? The answer is yes. Let's get that Yokai Shift off and do some even crazier power plays, because I haven't really messed with the Yokai Shift too much. All right, Mokugezo, Nightmare Bringer. I've inflicted confusion, and keep in mind, he's a lightning-based, lightning and fire-based sort of enemy, and it didn't really matter. Throw out Nightmare Bringer again, because I can. There we go. And then do I use Will Monk? All right, I use Will Monk to be, to be fun, I guess. I transitioned to Feral Form because I just wanted to play with that a little bit. Not the best usage there, but it's okay. I'm all right. Very nice. And then I'm trying to figure out how I want to kill him. And so I was like, mm, I don't want to die yet. So what can I do? And then he's like, oh, burst attack. Perfect. Into Storm of Strikes and I secure the kill. So yeah, not too much trouble. And yeah, killed myself, right? Good job. Killed myself from the future. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was enjoyable, and I'll see you guys next time.